Hey everybody, okay, this is another video I've seen a bunch of times. Um, I'm not sure if I did a video on this one before, so I'm doing it now. Um, okay, so I'm going to give you the main characters and everything, and then give you my review, review of it in a short synopsis. So it'll be six or seven minutes. Um, okay, so the title is Working Girl. It was made in 1988. Um, and it's an hour and 54 minutes. Okay, your main characters are Melanie Griffith, Harrison Ford, and Sigourney Weaver, and everybody else is supporting, um, there's Alec Baldwin before he was famous, um, Kevin Spacey, and, um, Philip Bosco plays her boss at the end of the movie, um, but I'll, I'll get there. Okay. Um, I like this movie a lot, and I kind of ran into it, actually. Um, I was on, I think it was, um, uh, Hulu or something, and it, they had it on for a while. You know how they do before they create out movies. So I watched it, and I said, oh, that's really good. So I watched it again, something else, and then I got it on DVD because I... If I can watch the movie twice or three times all the way through and not get bored, I know I like it. So then I get it on DVD. Um, okay. So I think this was the beginning role or the uh, first role for Melanie Griffith uh, before she was famous. And um, Harrison Ford was already established and Sigourney Weaver was established. Um, but... This was the beginning role for her and Alec Baldwin. A little bit for Joan Cusack, too. Because she played her best friend, Cynthia. Although they call her Sin. So, that's her name. Um, okay. So, the, the girl, uh, Tess McCall. McGill. Uh, wants to be somewhere else because it just so happens that her birthday is the beginning scene of the movie and her best friend Cynthia says you know gives her a little cupcake whatever says happy birthday and says what you wish for um and she doesn't really say anything but you can tell she just wants to get out of this situation she's in but she doesn't know how exactly um meanwhile uh, her, her boyfriend, who she's living with, um, she, her, her birthday party is supposed to be at 7, right? Okay, so she goes to this, uh, seminar for, for work, um, and she, she says, she's talking to her best friend and says she's gonna drop out early to go to her birthday party. While she comes home early, um... Uh, he's cheating on her with another girl. Another girl she doesn't know. A uh, Doreen something. Um, Doreen De Demuch Demuchio? Demucci? Um, so anyway, uh, she says, um, you know, well, how was I supposed to know? Um, because Cynthia says, well, you know, you're not even giving Mick another shot to trying to make it up to you, and he's, she says, well, it's not my fault, he was popping Doreen in our bed, <laughs> I swear, what she said, um, okay, so, meanwhile, uh, Jack, trainer, um, is, uh, supposedly the boyfriend of the Sigourney Weaver character, and she's one of those that has, uh, she thinks she's entitled um, her name is Katherine Parker, okay? But what I just found out today, because I looked at the character list again, um, the, the spelling of Katherine is like Katherine Hepburn. Um, so yeah, she she's um, well-to-do, and she thinks that she has everything in the bag because she's her. Um, also, what happens is uh, Tess... Um, wants to get up like a further advancement in her company so these two guys uh convince her to meet with a uh, bob and uh, bob is played by kevin spacey 
and Kevin Spacey makes a move that you shouldn't make when you're uh, superior to someone. But, um, so she instantly gets herself fired from the job. Um, but she talks to a, a career counselor or something, played by the wonderful Olympia Dukakis, um, and she says that she needs help, you know, whatever. And so she places her with another another company, same kind of thing, but a female, played by Sigourney Weaver. And so, but the problem with the Sigourney Weaver character, besides thinking that she's entitled to everything, is she uses people, she actually uses people as just someone to do her job for her because... There's two instance, instances of this, of that she uses the um, assistant to get coffee for her and whatever. And then also she calls a bunch of people she works with to see what they're trading in the stock market. So that's her MO. Um, and she tries to portray this team uh, facade like we're on a team, but she uses the information that Tess gives her to make her own career and makes it look like it was her idea instead of Tess's. Because the idea is to um, merge a radio company with, um, yeah, a radio company, Radio um, Trust or something. And she says, you know, we should do it. And, and then Catherine says, well, is it your idea for sure? And she says, yes, it's my idea. And then then she, then what Catherine does is she takes the information and kind of checks it out, but she puts it as her idea and not that the assistant had anything to do with it. Um, so yeah, kind of shady business there. Um, but don't worry, by the end of the movie, uh, the Catherine character gets her come up and so it, it works out. But in the meanwhile, uh, aunt, because um, Tess already kind of knows that because she's the assistant, no one will really listen to her. So she has to cut corners in a way and pretend to be someone else. Now, she's not lying, but she just has to be someone else because she can't go, I'm so-and-so's assistant, but I have this great idea because... In that kind of a, a, a business, you have to have a certain hierarchy to be listened to in the first place. So she comes up with that idea to talk to the Oren, oh, the guy Oren Trask, uh, played by Philip Bosco. Um, her idea is to go to um, the party, like a party before the wedding. Not the wedding, but like just after. Um... And it works out, but, uh, yeah. And then the character of Jack Trainer, um, he feels like he's being kind of used by her, but she says, it's not, I'm not using you. So they inevitably fall in love. And what's really funny is, like, there are a couple funny moments in the movie, like, really funny. Um, the first one is <laughs> uh, Harrison Ford, for all his goodness, is very uh very uh nervous in the movie or whatever in the role so he drinks a lot of drinks because they're at the party right so they have tropical drinks so he literally gets two drinks with the straws in them and is drinking one and drinking the other so by the end of the time he gets rid of two drinks at one time um yeah but as for the couple uh, I think, um, well, it's also how they were meant to play it, but the the characters of uh, the couple of Melody Griffith and uh, Harrison Ford in this one makes a good one, whereas uh, Sigourney Weaver just comes off as, like, demanding, but, okay, here's what I'll say, like, her character is demanding, but she has enough ability as far as acting to where you feel sympathetic for her just enough so you don't want to break her heart 
kind of a thing, you know. But it, it's a really good movie. And um, being made in 1988, it holds up because I just watched it the other night, uh, Friday. And, um, yeah, it still holds up. It still makes me laugh and everything else. So that's your testament. I mean, if it can last 30 five years um yeah you got you got something there so uh i probably said this before but i'll say it again check it out if you're into that kind of thing if you're into um you know a romantic comedy with a bit of drama check it out um all right